G'day guys and welcome to Medieval Mayhem. On this channel you'll find lots of videos into the whole medieval period and right into the Dark Ages too. Primarily we focus on the 10th, 11th and 12th centuries but we cover a lot of other time spans too. You'll find lots of uh, videos which do reviews into other people's gear. You'll find lots of DIY videos into costuming, into furniture. You'll find cooking videos and you'll find analysis of events, how things turned out the way that they did, who was involved, what happened. In today's project, we're gonna make a medieval style belt. Really enjoying my leather projects and I really wanted to add a really good uh, leather belt to my... In an earlier video, I did a review of a medieval style ring belt and it received a lot of criticism online because of a lack of uh, archaeological evidence to support these being used in the actual medieval period. So um, I went on online and I found um, some really good uh, hardware which is based on actual really good archaeological finds. So I purchased all of that and um, I've got some myself some really good three millimeter leather. I don't know what that is in uh, ounce weight, so my American and Canadian viewers will have to tell me. I work in metric, I don't work in imperial, I'm sorry. Uh, but if you do know, can you just please leave a comment below. Alrighty, so let's take a look. Uh, recently I purchased some very good replica belt hardware uh, from a shop. I really need to get myself a decent uh, workbench. This is a bit annoying and it's not very suitable for what I'm doing. I hadn't really anticipated doing uh, this belt just at this time, so. But here we are, and I've had a really good opportunity to do it. The reason I am doing it is because I'm going to help my son make um, make one for his school homework, and uh, so I thought I should uh, get stuck in and, and make one for myself. Radio. We're going to bevel down both sides of the belt, front and rear. It's going to make it look really nice and give it a really good polished sort of look to it. I realise that uh, it hasn't quite come out as well as I'd hoped. That's okay. It's a belt, it's a functional tool, and for someone like me, it's, it's fine. It's uh, very rewarding to make some of this kind of stuff for yourself. We know that during the medieval period, pretty much anything that didn't have a heartbeat was decorated. So, if you take examples of, and some of the best examples were found on the Mary Rose, the, uh, the shipwreck, but um, so much stuff was, was beautifully decorated and quite possibly by the individuals themselves who were using that kind of gear. I find that kind of thing really genuinely fascinating. Alrighty. This is starting to look a lot like a belt. Next step on this one is going to be uh, to do the, uh, the tooling. You need to wet the leather. You don't need to make it super, super wet. It is a fairly humid day here in Brisbane. So I've got some light markings on my uh, plywood and I'm using a pattern which is based off uh, one of the finds out of the Mary Rose. But I uh, really like this pattern and it, uh, it comes out really well when it's antiqued. It doesn't cost a great deal of money to build up a bit of a good tool kit for leather work and you can buy leather I think fairly inexpensively given that it's such a great uh, you know an hour, or two, an hour or two of time and you can have such a really great little project and the satisfaction of knowing that you've made it yourself it's nobody else's you didn't have to pay a fortune for it here we go, here's my little pattern, based off the, uh, the Mary Rose finds. It's come out really well, let's, uh, let's get a bit more done. 
So you might find you have to keep wetting your project. You do need to be a little bit kind of, I guess, prompt with what you're doing um, because the more you wet your leather, uh, you can actually risk damaging it. So uh, just something to bear in mind. I don't think you need to get too hung up on it, but uh, you do need to be a bit decisive when it comes to this kind of thing. Uh, we're now just putting a die onto the belt. This is a saddle tan color. I was finding the color that I was using last year, which was a light brown, just way too light. And I wasn't really getting the results I was looking for. You may need to put on a couple of different coats, that's fine. Wow, I nearly forgot. Uh, I almost didn't put this stuff on, or at least include it in the video. Uh, so what we're now going to do is put on a clear leather sealer. This is basically like a, um, a varnish. Its purpose is to protect the leather from UV light, rain, that kind of stuff. And that doesn't take long at all to dry. I probably would have, should have done things like the dye and the antique and then the um, uh, the sealant before doing the uh, the belt hardware, but there we go, that's done now. Alrighty, let's see how it goes. Righto, now we've uh, put the dye on the front and the rear and the, uh, the sides as well. Now what I want to do is put on some of this gel antique. This is a... Uh, Filbings, medium brown antique finish. This comes out like um, it's it's like a really sticky kind of stuff, um, and it's very easy to use too much. So I don't want to use too much at all. But I really want to make some of the um, the detail come to life a bit. Uh, now what I'm going to do is use some beeswax on the sides. This is one of those detailing features that really makes people's work stand out. And there's all kinds of different tools you could use to burnish something like this. Um, I use one of these and it gives you such a really nice professional finish. Now, a couple of interesting points here just before we come to a finish. The length of your belt varied and the, the furnishings on the belt would have varied according to when and where in the medieval period you were. So, typically people would hang their belts into a knot and let them down. Righty guys, thanks so much for watching. This has come out really well, really happy with it. It's, uh, it's a really good solid piece of kit and I'm going to be using it a lot this year. So looking forward to it. Really enjoyed making this project. I really hope you've enjoyed watching the video. Please like, subscribe and share and I will catch you in my next video.